So what I've got here on the bench today then is a uh, little Wi-Fi dish antenna that uh, I picked up off eBay direct from China. It uh, only cost £2.10 but I did have to pay 90 pence shipping as well. And uh, this particular design of uh, Wi-Fi antenna has been around I think as long as Wi-Fi has. I remember these years ago being sold in my uh, local Maplin store of course for a, a massive markup. I think they were charging just shy of £30 for one of these but uh, I never actually purchased one because I thought it just looked a little bit gimmicky like a uh, toy of sorts. And if you remember going back uh, probably 10 years ago now, uh, little Nerve desktop toys were all the rage, you know, little rocket launchers. And I just imagined uh, this having a button somewhere that actually uh, shot a Nerve dart out of uh, this piece here. So I uh, never actually bought one, not for £30 anyway, but uh, for £2.00. 10 pence i thought uh, it'd be worth getting one of these and have a look see what it is actually inside one of these because a lot of people do say that uh, they are quite powerful and do improve the uh, wi-fi access so before we actually tear it down to see what kind of uh, antenna it really is i thought we'd do a quick scan from uh, my window here in the lab just to see how well it actually performs so a little bit disappointing then only uh, 10 access points so uh, you know it's, it's not really a performer but uh, we'll uh, tear it down and see what's uh, actually happening inside there as to what kind of antenna it really is so a little bit disappointing with the performance then but what we'll do is open it up and uh, we'll have a look see what kind of antenna it is and see if we can actually improve this antenna but uh, it came with no retail packaging at all but uh, for two pound 10 pence i wouldn't expect it to and it uh, just came in a jiffy bag like this and uh, it does look a little bit grubby in places so i don't think it's uh, actually brand new it's probably uh, gone uh, swapped hands with a few different sellers there in uh, the uh, shinzing market before uh, the person actually put these on ebay i presume it's got a uh, picking number here and the coax just feels like the uh, normal cheap standard coax you get with something like this so the antenna itself it has some uh, screws here on the back of the uh, dish part also a couple of phillips head screws there on the uh, hinge part but uh, here on the base there doesn't seem to be any screws at all so it's probably just clips on the sides here and uh, also obviously this has been uh, made down to a price because we have the indentations here for the rubber feet but uh, they haven't bothered putting them in as you can see so you know again two pound ten pence you can't really complain so now that we've got the antenna taken apart we can now see what kind of antenna it really is and uh, if you've uh, been subscribed to my channel for a while you'll probably recognize this antenna from one that i built previously and uh, it's uh, this one now this one only has a uh, half parabolic uh, curve reflector to this it's not a full 360 degree one this one is a full 360 degree parabolic reflector with the uh, driven element in the center virtually just like this one that i've built now as you saw at the beginning of the video this antenna performed quite poorly now the uh, measurement of the uh, diameter of the main driven element here is uh, around 55 millimeters but uh, it should be 62 millimeters in diameter like the one i made in a previous video i'll put a link in the description to this actual video but uh, for this to actually be uh, resonant at 2.4 gigahertz the main driven element the diameter needs to be 62 millimeters so this one is falling quite short at only about 55 millimeters there so possibly that's one reason why it actually performs quite badly and also if you take a look at the reflector itself on here it's not cut to precision it uh, seems to have been a bit school whiff in the machine there we've got a big slice taken out here where this side actually lines up with the uh, side of the casing here so uh, you know it's it's not made with uh, any great precision so you know it's two pound ten pence so you, you don't really expect that but you would expect something to work you know i mean yeah it's it's not a brilliant antenna but uh, if you're just using it to boost your router for example 
you probably would get a little bit more gain out of uh, one of these than a uh, simple dipole lantern but we'll do a test of that at the end of the video as well but uh, what I'm going to do now is try and remove this uh, main driven element here it's just held in place by uh, some uh, melt riveted plastic rods here I mean this one's already come off so uh, I'm going to remove that and desolder it from the actual uh, coax here just so I can actually take a measurement of this parabolic reflector here so we can take the distance and uh, then work out whether the uh, main driven element is in the right position from that back parabolic reflector so it's getting the maximum Wi-Fi signal reflected back onto it so I've got the main driven element off here and I put the macro lens on just to show you why this antenna may have performed so poorly now what's happened here is where the coax actually comes up through the uh, reflector here to solder onto the main driven element the uh, actual metal has actually cut into it so it's actually grounded to the uh, reflector so the signal wire is grounded to the uh, reflector and the main driven element and that is probably the reason why uh, the signal strength was so poor because although the uh, driven element is smaller than uh, what it should be for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency it's still quite a broadband antenna design this so it should have performed uh, you know slightly uh, better than what it did in the test so that's probably why it uh, was so poor so now I've got the back reflector away from the uh, plastic housing here you can clearly see that cut in the uh, signal wire there so it was just actually shorting out directly to the ground here which is soldered on to the back of this parabolic reflector now this parabolic reflector is 90 millimeters in diameter and it's 18 millimeters deep so its focal point is around 26 millimeters away from the uh, center dip of the uh, parabolic reflector here so this antenna would work a lot better if the uh, main driven element was uh, positioned about uh, this distance away from the actual parabolic reflector rather than down inside there it just would perform a lot better than what it uh, actually does so what i'm going to do is use this centerpiece of this uh, plastic dish case in here and i'm going to cut it down and mount the uh, driven element directly onto that now as I said this has got a slight curve in it so it would serve no real purpose being mounted that way but uh, being mounted in that direction then uh, we may get some reflection back off this curve as well so to cut it down to the uh, right length here so this is uh, around 26 millimeters away from the uh, reflector that's inside here I've drilled a small hole through the uh, top of the uh, plastic uh, peg if you like in here and I've just cut some copper wire and I just put that down through the center and I've put a little bit of masking tape on uh, here so I now know how long that is and I can work out how much I've got to cut away to get it uh, around that 26 millimeters distance away from the reflector inside the case in here so I've cut away the split coax and I've uh, resoldered it onto the back of this uh, parabolic reflector here I've also made the hole a little bit wider as well and uh, I've put some heat shrink tube in around uh, the uh, inner dielectric just to uh, add a little bit more protection so I've left quite a lengthy piece of the uh, signal wire here because what I'm going to be doing now that I've modified it is coming up and through this plastic tube in here I've uh, cut out a little notch there so the actual signal wire can lay in there and I'm going to be soldering that directly onto the main driven element so here's the modified Wi-Fi dish antenna as it's called so I think what we'll do now we'll hook it up to the alpha card and we'll give it another test to see if we've actually improved anything with the uh, modifications so I've got the uh, Wi-Fi antenna in the same position I had it before on the uh, first test it's just on my windowsill here pointing out of my uh, window here in the lab so We'll give it a quick scan and see if we've improved things. So definitely straight away, it's all jumped up. We've got 25 access points there, so much better than the uh, eight access points that we got the first time we tested this antenna. And also about half of them are uh, a nice green color as well. So that's not too bad at all. So what I've got here, I've got my antenna on the right and I've got this little uh, parabolic dish antenna from China 
on the left and there's a big difference between the two and uh, my antenna is doing much better probably due to the driven element being actually tuned for 2.4 gigahertz where the one on the uh, Chinese uh, little dish antenna here it's uh, slightly smaller than what it should be so it's not quite tuned for 2.4 gigahertz so you can see a big difference between the two there and yes they're both using the same uh, Alpha Networks uh, Wi-Fi adapter so a little bit disappointing then I mean even with the uh, modifications I mean you could go to the extreme of uh, changing the coax out you could also make a proper um, sized driven element here but the only problem doing that is because it's going to be a little bit bigger you're going to make yet less use of the parabolic reflector the parabolic reflector needs to be a little bit bigger for the 2.4 gigahertz I mean I may take a mold a fiberglass mold as I said at the beginning using this uh, parabolic reflector here but I'd probably use this with a uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna or a 5.8 gigahertz antenna it, because the uh, dish itself is suited more to that kind of frequency with a much smaller driven element as I say if you put uh, a proper size 62 millimeter diameter one on here you're going to block a lot of that parabolic reflector so you know what you gain from one you're going to lose from the other so I hope you enjoyed this video and you did find it interesting and even with my modifications it's still a uh, pretty poor antenna but uh, if you've got any questions or comments drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me for the next one